Good morning. This is our Sunday morning Bible study at 9 a.m. I'm glad that you're here and you've joined us. Um, it's online only. So if you're watching live, thank you for joining us. And if you're watching later, I'm glad that you're here. Invite a friend or share the link with them. And today we are looking at 1 Samuel chapter 16, which is all about the another anointing of the king. Last week we looked at the anointing of King Saul. Well, we'll look at what went wrong with that. Today we are going to see a new king anointed, and that is King David by the prophet Samuel. So I'm glad that you joined us. I hope that you'll grab your Bibles and follow along. If not, you can follow along on the screen. Let's go into the background of our lesson, which is taken from 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 1 through 13. Now, as we talked about last week, Israel became a monarchy with the anointing of King Saul. And as they began to live under King Saul, they started to drift away from God's will. And what Samuel had prophesied, that they would drift away, that they would, would lose sight of God and focus on the king instead of focusing on God, has now been coming true. And not only did King Saul lack godly leadership, he also sinned deliberately against God, making him unfit to lead Israel. And the final stroke that happened against King Saul was he was more concerned about people's opinions than he was about obeying God. And so after Saul failed to obey a key time in the life of Israel, God replaced him. And the new king would be someone who had a heart to be faithful to God no matter what. Now, remember to all outward appearances, last week King Saul looked like the perfect king. He was tall, he was handsome, he was courageous, but after he became king, he began to ignore the wisdom of God and decided to follow his own wisdom, his own feelings. And finally, because he took over the priestly office, he was not a priest, he was not from the tribe of Benjamin, but he offered a sacrifice instead of waiting for Samuel to come and do that. He disobeyed God's direct command, and God rejected him. <coughs> and so in today's lesson, we learn who God chose to be the next leader, and that was David. And he came to be known as a man after God's own heart. And so chapter 15 ends with, with Samuel mourning for Saul because of all the wrong that he had done and because God had asked him to find a replacement king for him. And so we begin our lesson today in verse 16. And it's all about God's instructions to Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears about it, he will kill me. The Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what to do. 
you are to anoint for me the one I indicate. Samuel did what the Lord told him. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they met him. They asked him, do you come in peace? Well, Samuel shows up in Bethlehem and the elders are, are worried because the prophet didn't normally show up in town. And if he did, it was usually something for correction or something they were doing wrong that God wanted the people to know. So here we have King Saul twice obeyed, deliberately disobeyed God in a big way. And Samuel, you know, it begins with, the, with this chapter. He's mourning for him. He, he admired Saul. But Saul didn't do what a king was supposed to do. He didn't follow God's ways. And so once God rejected Saul as king, Samuel, we know, went home to his house in Ramah to mourn. And Samuel might have mourned because he saw Saul's great potential to be a king. But he just could not get in line with God. Whatever the reason, God had had enough of the wrong things that Saul was doing. And it was time for Samuel to be about the God's work. See, there was still a nation to look after. God was still in control, and he had already chosen the next king for Israel. So as Samuel continued mourning in Ramah, God visited him and gave the prophet specific instructions for his next assignment. And that's what we just read a moment ago. Samuel was told to go to Bethlehem with a horn full of oil to see a man named Jesse, the father of eight sons. Among the eight, Samuel would not only discover God's choice for the next king, but would also be the one to anoint him, just as he had anointed Saul king. But Samuel immediately hesitated at God's command since Bethlehem was not part of his normal troubles or normal, his normal travels. And the prophet thought that Saul would find out why he was going to Bethlehem and have him killed. But God promised to protect him. And so to relieve his fears, God told Samuel to take with him a sacrificial animal and invite Jesse and his sons to the sacrifice as they worshiped the Lord in the city. That way, if Saul found out that Samuel was in Bethlehem, the king would think that the prophet was there on an assignment from the Lord, which, of course, he was. And realizing that there was no point in arguing with God, Samuel goes, makes the journey to Bethlehem to find the man that God had chosen for Israel's next king. And he had no idea who it was to be. He just knew he was to go and find the man, and God would point out who the man was to be to him. And so when the prophet arrived, arrived in Bethlehem, all the elders, the city leaders, were shocked to see him. And the elders were afraid that Samuel's arrival in town probably meant judgment because of all the wrong things that Saul had been doing. And so they wanted to know whether Samuel's visit was a peaceful one or if he had come to bring the Lord's judgment. When God gives us an assignment, we need to obey him. Even when we're misunderstood by others. Our responsibility is to do what he has called us to do and to let God come and take care of the outcome and the response of other people. 
So our lesson continues in verse 5. Samuel replied to the elders, Yes, in peace, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, that's Jesse's family, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before me. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, The Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then had Shemaha pass by, but Samuel said, Nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel, but Samuel said to him, The Lord has not chosen these. Samuel tells the, re the, the elders the reason why he's there, that he's come in peace, not in judgment, and he's the, to perform a special sacrifice for the Lord. And so Samuel invites Jesse and his seven sons to join him in this sacrifice. And as this service progresses, Samuel looks at all of Jesse's son, trying to figure out which is the right one to anoint as king. Samuel forgot it wasn't his responsibility to choose the man. It was God's responsibility. And so the first son that Samuel sees is Eliab, the oldest of Jesse's sons. Now, Scripture doesn't give us a complete description of him, but we can guess that he's tall and strong and handsome, and he greatly impressed Samuel. And Samuel's probably thinking at this point, boy, well, this isn't a hard job. This obviously must be the one that the Lord has chosen. After all, look how handsome he is. And so Samuel's about to call it a day when suddenly he hears the Lord speak to him. And God says, now, wait a minute, Samuel, hold on. Eliab may be good looking, he may be strong, he may be able, but I have not chosen him. In fact, I don't choose people based on the way they look. I choose people based on whose hearts are right before me those who are willing to follow my commands, no matter how good-looking or gifted they may be. And so, as if to emphasize the point, Jesse calls his second son, Abinadab, his third son, Shammah, and his other sons to pass before Samuel, but none of them was chosen by God to be king. You know, we... we we do that. We, we choose our politicians based on looks. We choose our church leaders based on looks or their financial contributions or their political influences or their social standing and other characteristics that are not in line with God's word. But if we are faithful to God, he will tell us who to choose for leadership. And we are to choose for leadership only people whose hearts are in tune with God's calling. And so we continue. We find out who God's choice is. And it turns out to be Jesse's youngest son. So we ask Jesse, are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered. He is tending the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So David at this time is probably a teenager. 
and he's out tending the sheep. He, Jesse didn't even think that he was old enough or that he was ready for the job. But God had other plans. Verse 12, so he sent for him and had him brought in. He was glowing with health and he had a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day, on the spirit of the Lord, the, on that day, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. And then Samuel went home to Ramah. And so Samuel's been rebuked by God. He's wondering, he's wondering, is, is Israel's next king really here? Was, was I sent to the right place? Because he sees Jesse's seven sons, and the Lord God has chosen none of them. I mean, he might have been thinking, did I, did I hear correctly from the Lord? And so he asks, is there another son nearby? And Jesse tells the prophet that, yes, he has a younger son, but he's out in the field taking care of the sheep. Since none of the other sons were chosen by God, Samuel says, go get the younger son because he must be the one that God is going to choose. And Samuel made it clear that no one was going to participate in this sacrificial, this sacrifice and this meal until he had seen all of Jesse's sons. And so when David gets called back from the field and finally arrives, Samuel looked at him and he noticed two things. One, he was ruddy. In the Hebrew, it literally means he was, he was red. So most likely he was redheaded. Though in, in most pictures of art of David, he is pictured blonde and blue eyes. But that's probably not an accurate description. He was probably more... Mediterranean with reddish hair. And it was clear, like King Saul, that he was a very handsome young man. Perhaps he was better looking than all of his older brothers. And so to eliminate any doubt Samuel, that Samuel may have had about David, God speaks to him and says, get up and anoint David, Israel's next king. And God wanted David's brother to see him being anointed king with the horn of oil for several reasons. One, you know, we, the Bible tells us that the first will be last and the last will be first. And David's work in the field didn't eliminate him from being chosen as God's man. See, we need to learn that God can choose us for his work no matter where we are, no matter what we're doing. And the second thing is only from the Davidic line would come the Messiah of the world. That is an Old Testament prophecy. And so not only was David's choice as king to replace King Saul, but it was fulfilling biblical prophecy. And because David was willing to be out in the field tending his father's sheep, God knew that he could trust this young man with the sheep of Israel. And so Samuel poured the oil on David's head and God's anointing came upon David for the rest of his life. And having successfully completed his assignment, Samuel returned home. And our lesson from today's lesson is that we must be like Samuel. We must be like David, willing to be available, willing to respond to the things that God would have us do. And as being believers, we need to trust God to develop the qualities and character in us that honor God. 
And as Christians, we need to realize that we alone do not have the capabilities to please God consistently. And so we need the constant presence of the Savior, and we need the guidance of the Holy Spirit to develop our character and to meet the qualities that God wants from all of us. Let us pray. Almighty God, we confess our, our frailty. We confess that we sin. And forgive us for the assumptions that we make and the quick judgments that have caused harm. Make us slow to judge and quick to pray. Grant us the gift of patience in seeking out your kingdom in our line and in our life. Thank you for forgiving our sins, for seeing our hearts, and most of all, for your call to serve us. In Jesus' name, amen. Don't forget, we have worship here, 1010, in person, also online, Facebook, and YouTube. And then on Sunday, November 6th, after the worship service, we are going to have soup, sandwiches, and ice cream after church. So if you're able, I hope that you come to, to enjoy a meal together, to enjoy some time together, and worship God both today and next week. Have a great Sunday.